In this lesson, we'll talk about several topology-related tools that we can use in ZBrush to create accessories and also to recreate topology for our base mesh. So let's jump into ZBrush, and we're just going to use this uh, worm as an example. He's a little bit more finished, again, as we're kind of working our way through it very slowly. The next thing that we're going to do in the next lesson, though, is come in and sculpt some of this detail, which is, I'm sure, one of the things you really want to get to. But there's a lot to cover in ZBrush, and right now, we're going to talk about some of the tools we can use to create new topology. So this can be used for uh, creating fitted uh, accessories or clothing for characters. So one of the things we can do is come in with this guy and let's just duplicate this tool. And I'm going to go into geometry. Let's go and delete the subdivision levels. So we're just working with a, a single mesh with no levels. We'll go ahead and solo that. And let's say we want to create some geometry that kind of fits on his back and I want it to be a separate piece. So we can go in here and I'll hit T to narrow this down. We want to use the topology brush. So all the topology brush uh, you're going to do with that is to draw curves across your mesh and you want them to go in the direction and in the configuration where you want your edges to flow. So let's say I want to have a nice clean piece of geometry coming across here. Now right now they're just curves so what we need to do is crisscross and create a grid pattern assuming we want a quad type of a of a workflow of a uh, layout. So I'll come across here. And now everywhere that we intersect, we're going to create vertices. And then between those vertices, we're going to create polygons and we can see that here. If you find that you haven't drawn it out far enough, you can come to the end and continue those lines across. So I could say, you know, I want to continue this on here come in and bring that across and then you could create you know, another face coming down here or another row of faces okay now to get rid of the little bits that are sticking off you can hold down alt and drag across the model and then to actually create the geometry you want to click on the support surface and the thickness is going to be defined by the draw size so if I have the draw size down to one and I click You can see I get something uh, on here that doesn't have any thickness. It's matching up as close as it can with this, although it's low resolution uh, to the point where it can't get all that detail. But it's unmasked right now, and the rest of it's masked. So if we want to split this out, out into its own subtool, we'll go to Split, Split Unmasked, and that will create a new subtool. And you can see it doesn't have any thickness. So this would be good for if you wanted this guy to have like clothing or a blanket or a saddle, something that fits on top of him. From here, you can go ahead and, and manipulate this and sculpt it. Now, if you want to have something that has a little bit more thickness, you can uh, draw out your curve. So we'll draw out some of these curves here real quickly. And come in here. We can choose to get rid of that. We'll click, and with this draw size, you can see that we have a little bit of thickness there. If we increase our draw size more, you can see that we have even more thickness. And again, once you've got that the way you want it, you can go ahead and split unmasked, and it'll create a new subtool that contains that geometry. From here, you could subdivide it and sculpt it, do whatever you want to it. Okay, so what happens if we want to actually modify the underlying topology of our uh, mesh. Well, we can do that too. So we have this particular mesh and let's say we want to redraw our own special topology for this. We don't want to take what uh, what we have. We want to actually really customize this. Well, we can do this in ZBrush and this is useful if you have something that is you've just gone in and created the high-res mesh and you don't you haven't really concerned yourself too much about anything on the low-res side. Now you're trying to get it into a form where you can get it out into some sort of a, an, a game engine or maybe you just want to be able to uh, animate it with some maps on it and you can so you can create your own topology now to do this we want to use a z-sphere so go ahead and bring in a z-sphere and then all the way down we're going to choose under rigging select mesh and let's select the worm tool mesh Let me try that again and once you select that mesh from here it'll actually bring that up and you can see it sort of ghosted on here which is the way you want it to look. Uh, if you have solo on, you probably want to turn that, or if you have it on, you want to turn that off so you can see your mesh here. The next thing we'll do is right under rigging, there's a sub palette called topology. 
Here, we want to edit topology. Assuming that we don't have anything that we're starting from, we'll go ahead and say edit topology. So now what we're going to do is our little cursor is going to turn into uh, a way to draw out geometry here. So I can start by clicking on the support mesh, coming in here and creating edges wherever I want those to be. And everywhere I click is going to be a point. So I can come down here and say, you know, I want to define this mouth a little bit more. Now if I want to start from an existing point to create a little bit more geometry, I can control click on that point and then draw out from there. So here I can now come around the eyes and just create points where it makes sense to do so. Okay, I can come in here now and start one here and I can draw it to an existing point and control clicking whenever you're going to be clicking on an existing point here. You can come in here and break that up a little bit, start to connect things together. So you're just interactively creating on the top of your high res, you're creating your low res. So, okay, so rather than creating your low res first and then going back in and adding detail to it, you're creating your high res, just making sure it looks good. And then you're creating the low res because that's what's going to make it work. And then it, it'll fit with the detail that you've already created. So you're not trying to shoehorn in uh, the detail, which is, you know, the way you want it to look, which is important. You don't, you're not trying to shoehorn that into something, some low res model that you've already created. You're actually going the other way. You're taking the look that you've decided is great for what you want to do. And then you're going in to do the technical stuff, uh, laying out the, uh, the topology so that it matches up with that. Okay, you can come down here, come across. You can do this symmetrically as well if you want to. This model is not completely symmetrical at this point, so we'll leave it as is. You can just come in and decide how to lay that out. Now, if you hit A, Again, you'll get your adaptive skin because we're working with our Z-spheres here, so it's going to function the same way as our other uh, method of when we were actually using the Z-spheres. Let me just get one more sort of row built up here. And we'll come down here and connect it up. And we won't do this whole thing. It's one of these things that take a little while to actually get the whole thing completed. And we'll connect these points up. Now, if you have some points that you want to move, you can just go to move, and you can move those points around. Okay? If you want to delete an edge, you can hit Alt and delete that, and you can see it deleted both of those. And then you can sort of redraw it the way that you want it. Again, hitting A, you can see here's kind of a, a completed section. Let's just go down here and do one more. And then we'll look at how we can get that detail through. Just go back in. Again, hitting control on those first points or reconnecting. Okay, so uh, you can see that as we hit our adaptive skin, you can get the preview of what that underlying structure is uh, going to look like. Okay, and if we go up to adaptive skin, you can see that preview corresponds with that. Okay, what we can also do is go down to projection if we want to actually project that detail through. So I'll increase the density a little bit for our adaptive skin and then I'll go into projection and turn that on. And now when we do a preview, it's actually projecting that detail through. Remember we talked about projection, it's automatically projecting that detail through to our new mesh. Okay, and so we can get a better idea. Now it will take a little bit longer. Um, but uh, that projection subpalette will enable you to do that. If you turn that off, um, you can see that we're working with a density of 5, so it's smoothing it, but it's not projecting any of that underlying detail into the new mesh. So the idea with this is that you would go in and redraw all the topology covering your entire mesh with the exact layout that you want, and then you could create an adaptive skin using projection, and it would project all of your high-res detail into this new mesh, all complete with subdivision levels and ready to go. 
Okay, another way to kind of modify the base uh, base geometry of your mesh is um, if we go ahead and jump into this, we'll go down, and this is the one that has the subdivision levels. If we come down to the bottom level, and we see our this is what our current low res looks like. If we want to rebuild this but still maintain all the detail, we can freeze the subdivision levels. And I've got layers here, so let me bake those down. So we'll freeze our subdivision levels. And then we could use something like QRemesher, and we could remesh it. And that'll recalculate our, our model based on the settings that we talked about earlier. And it's doing it on a frozen level one here. So it's created a new base mesh here. So now when we turn off freeze subdivision levels, it's going to go back and reproject that previous detail through to this new geometry. So it's again automatically projecting and giving us a new uh, a new model based on the new topology that we've created. Now this topology we haven't uh, customized at all. We've just used the QRE mesh to automatically create it. So we don't have you know that much control over where it is. Um, the thing I want you to notice is that we've we've not uh, had to delete the subdivision levels or project through separate subtools. We're actually working with the same subtool, so we've used uh, the free subdivision levels to do that. So we'll go ahead and let that think for just a second. So now we've got our subdivision levels back, but they're now based on new base topology that we created using that Q remesher. Okay, so you can see that detail has been projected through. So that's a couple of uh, things to keep in mind as you work with new topology. You can use the topology tools. Remember that's with a Z-sphere and the rigging and uh, rigging and topology sub palettes, and then also the topology brush as well. Next, let's talk about some more advanced sculpting concepts. So we'll actually start to work on this uh, on this low res guy and start to do some sculpting on him and and get that detail that we want to get using some of the brushes here in ZBrush. So we'll talk about that in the next lesson.